Hello there, and welcome to Wayfair Plays Solace Crafting. Here we are, so many episodes into it, and uh, I have an announcement to make about what I'm going to do. I am enjoying this game, and I'm going to keep playing it. Uh, and I am going to do... Now, I may play other things and stuff like that. It's not an exclusive thing, but uh, I am going to stick with it. Uh, but what I'm going to do is do uh, three more episodes in this season one. Then this one, I'm going to be looking at the Disciple class, or as the game calls it, Archetype. And uh, I'll do the other two remaining Archetypes, Scout and uh, Squire, since I've been playing the whole series long as uh, an Apprentice, the Magic User class. So, in that case, um, I'm just going to look at these in, these in these shorter episodes, and then that'll conclude Season 1. And what I'm going to do then is start an actual tutorial series, because now that I've learned so much, I want to do a bit of a shorter format uh, tutorial series, not just tips and tricks, rapid fire, but really just kind of like some of the things that people would need to know with this newer version because there's there's like no YouTube videos out there on the current version and um, and the differences and so I'm gonna do that in kind of like starting again but be a little bit quicker about it a little bit more efficient with time unlike this intro and then I am going to uh, at the same time do a season two of Wayfarer Plays Solace Crafting where I'm playing and it's me and you going through my adventure. Now that I know how to wear armor properly, the whole world is open to me. Okay, so here we are. I have created a new character. I did a few things to start, you know, make the stone tools and uh, made the simple armor. And uh, I have um, done not much else. I have made the clay more because I wanted to see, you know, what I could do with the disciple character. So here's our lady here. Um, looking fine in her simple armor. So remember, this is the armor made directly from stock that you can make without any crafting stations right from the beginning of the game. Um, now, the thing is, when you decide that the character is going to be a disciple character, of course, the sign goes on, you can, in the way that you arrange your skill points, change that. You're not locked in, but this is what you get to start. Your attributes are arranged like this. If you go for custom character, you have six un unassigned uh, attribute points. But if you go with one of the archetypes, one of the classes, your six skill points applicable to attributes will be put in for you. And uh, the uh, Disciple, which is a cleric-like character, starts off with two points in strength, one in stamina, and three in wisdom and i remember that from the old D, D games wisdom was important you know for your healing and stuff but wisdom in this game carries some other things like it would be a smaller physical skill bonus than other things but it still has some and it has a, a smaller range skill bonus a smaller magic damage bonus than would be with um the uh what do you call that character? Yeah, the apprentice. Uh, and so you, but you have a higher magic skill bonus there because that's for, you know, helping you with the healing. And of course, wisdom gives you the biggest healing bonus as you add attribute points to wisdom. But there's some other things, a little bit of parrying, uh, you know, block and things like that. 
which now that I'll be doing more melee combat, uh, I'll be able to do a little bit more of that. Resist 1.8, that's resisting magic spells. That's good. So, you know, increasing your wisdom gives you these things, plus a buildup of mana and mana regen. Um, so, it's basically like, basically like you get some strength because you're somewhat of a fighter, some stamina, which helps you with your agility and blocking your energy. Uh, although it's only 0 0.3. It'll bring you up to 0 0.6 then. It goes up by 0.3s it looks like. But uh, what is the uh, big bonus for stamina? That's your health. So that's a good thing to have. Um, and so as you go through the game, you would probably add uh, perks to these same categories. Um, where basically you're a fighter healer. And now what I did is um, under, oh yeah, under your harvesting skills, that's a separate thing you select at the beginning of the game. I selected reaping, but you pretty much assign these as you want to. You know, pretty much you drop into the strong hit thing um, for each category as you get your first bunches of skill points. And then little by little you can add to the speed and the strength of all these harvesting skills um, as time goes on. Um, but in crafting, yeah, I haven't done much of that yet. I, mean, I wanted to show you how it is to start. But in adventuring, this is the other thing where selecting a disciple... You have some things that are assigned for you at the beginning. If, once again, you come in as a custom character, you have six skill points unassigned for your um, special abilities, basically, or what these categories are. But for the Disciple, if you selected that, you get um, a Zealous Strike, which is basically like a good attack. It's like buffers for your attack bonuses for attacking and fighting and then you get your healing spell which is nice and you get um, also this which is not something you need to execute as you see it has the green plus here at the bottom corner that means this is an attribute so by unlocking this um, which to start it's already unlocked for you you basically get Two, two stamina so this helps with your stamina uh, as a stamina bonus which is your healing and regen kind of stuff and your max health so that's nice you basically have plus two stamina than what you have in your attributes so that's how the disciple starts basically open up the map there so basically what I did um, is I, I'm just still in the simple armor so that's the beginning armor you can make from stock. And it's one of the first things in the tutorial. Um, if I want to, I could make, you know, iron armor and stuff. But I would need to unlock the smithing skills associated with that. Now, this would just be a matter of time here. If you go to skills, crafting, smithing, that type of armor needs to be unlocked. So you need to do some smithing to start. So you collect a bunch of iron, smith some items, um, and then maybe do the practice thing where you get extra XP. Um, or not XP, but uh, skill points and smithing. When you just practice, it uses the, the resource, but doesn't give you an item. But it gives you more of a advancement, I guess, in the experience points for smithing. Not your overall experience points. But basically by that you can probably unlock these fairly quickly. Since the forge is one of the first things you make and you don't really need much, much other than stone to make it. Um, and then you smith up some iron in that and you can make the uh, smithing station real early on. There's no problem in using that stuff. Collect a bunch of iron and get your armor going pretty early. But I didn't in this, just to kind of show something. I do have a claymore I made. That you don't even need 
um, to unlock. So it's a 30 damage weapon. Uh, basically, if we go into crafting here and we look at it, it's like a two-handed weapon, so you can't carry something else with it. Um, other weapons here, like if you see here under smithing, you have axe. That would be a 10 damage weapon because it's like a single-handed weapon. You can use it with a shield. Um, you have the club, which is 10 damage. Basically, your single-handed weapons are going to do that. But they're faster, they have a speed of three, so that they, um, uh, when you use them, there's a three second countdown before you can strike again with them. Whereas with the two-handed, it does like 30 damage weapon, 30 damages with this weapon, 30 damage points with the weapon, and it has a speed of six. So if you think about it, going with the two-handed weapon might be better in that regard. It does more damage per blow. You have to wait twice as long, six seconds rather than three seconds to attack again. But the one that's going three seconds, let's say after two hits, it'll still do 20 damage in the space that you do 30 damage with one hit from the single-handed weapon. But the other trade-off then is you don't get to have a shield on. And to start, until you really skill up in smithing a bunch, you're not able to unlock like an iron shield. You're stuck with the woodworking wooden shield, which um, we could put on shields here. It's the buckler right up here. So for all you know character types, this could be your shield weapon. And it starts off with a measly 0.12 armor. Of course, as you get more advanced in making them, you can make better and better ones. Um, but if you think about it, here, let's do this. Let's look at the armor quality of the simple armor we're wearing. So we go to tailoring, armor. Um, thought I selected armor. My tailoring? Hold on here. Tailoring. There we go. Um, now, uh, the thread armor, I think, is something that needs to be unlocked. Although, I'm seeing it here. That's probably because... I'll check this in a moment, but... You know, the thread helmet that I was wearing and the thread armor I was wearing in the rest of the game. All these numbers are kind of low, 0 0.4. So I think armor values in general are kind of low. So the 0 0.16 of the shield just adds a little bit, but every little bit does help. So it would be interesting to just try that two-handed versus one-handed. Maybe I'll do that in uh, you know my tutorial series I'll try and experiment with that more but right now I'm just gonna go out with my two-handed claymore and just show you what happened when I did a little bit of adventuring now remember I'm just wearing the simple armor but I have it in the right slots it's not under wardrobe even though you can put it there it's under adventuring so it sees it as armor now I played like nine episodes in this series so far not technically having armor on I mean you'd see the armor on because it's in your wardrobe but <laughs> you're not actually wearing it it counts for nothing so I got my claymore out we're gonna do a little bit of fighting I did a little bit beforehand but not much but I was finding it to be pretty cool um, basically the first one is your basic attack under one which would just be swinging the claymore. And then two is my um, zealous strike, which gives bonuses to that attack. And then under the shift one, I put the healing. So that's what I'll be using. Nothing ranged this time. Unlike my apprentice, no magic spells from a distance. So it's all up close and personal. 
Let's see what we can find. Before recording, I did find a few things, so I may have to go further to do it. Now I'm not going to go too far out, as I am in this just the simple armor and stuff. But it was going a lot smoother than it was during my series, mostly because I am actually officially wearing armor. There's a guy there. Use the uh, Zella Strike there. Now run a bit. Just avoid the blasts. Oh, wait a minute. Did I kill him? I did. <laughs> Amazing how things are much easier. I was having struggles and fits fighting these guys before. Probably because... You know, I took maybe two hits there, and look, my health isn't so bad. It's it's almost fully recovered. I mean, yeah, that was my big problem all along. And having fits with the fighting is because I wasn't really wearing armor. Had it in the wrong slots. So you see there, um, the claymore and the staff... That's not the big difference is the weapon type because they both do 30 damage. So my apprentice's staff was doing the same as the claymore, really. I wasn't using it much because I was throwing spells at the guys and then trying to dodge them. Oh, and here's a dark elf. Got that attack in. Now, if I want to heal, I could just do shift one. I heal myself and he died. Well, I was just healing myself, but maybe that Zealous Strike does a, a a damage afterwards, like a bleed damage. Here, let's look at it real quick. Because, yeah, it looks like that, you know, after I get that hit in, these guys do drop pretty soon after that. Skills, um, it's under Adventuring. Disciple is this one and Zella strike 0.75 bonus damage then in parentheses 30.75 meaning that's overall because if I'm using a claymore it's 30 so it's going to give me 30.75 uh, and then a 0.4 bonus to damage level that's another stat don't know how that fits in the math wise, but apparently, yeah, it is going to help. It has a five second cool cooldown and five energy costs. That's in your stamina and a five mana cost. So it is magic. But as you see, both of those have recovered already. <laughs> but in any case, I haven't really, on these earlier creatures. When I was fighting before, yeah, I think I did have a a mana drain down or a stamina drain down that I just had to run a little bit. And when that went, ended, I was all right. So, there's another guy. I'm trying to right click. All right, targeted. Doom. As soon as I hit the two button. So, and, you know, it looks like it would have been a much easier start to the game. Not necessarily using the Disciple, but putting the armor in the right slots. But in any case, the melee, I'm not as worried about. I could kind of stand and fight him a little bit. If I see my health drop, I'll scoot away, cast the heal spell, that sort of thing. Now, if I go further and further out, they'll get pretty tough. Although, I've learned how to deal with monsters that are doing lots of damage to you with the running around I had to because I was fighting without armor. Oh. But in any case, you know, after I do uh, two more episodes of the other 
characters, you know, basically what I see and starting as the character types, classes, archetypes as they're called. Now can I target from a distance? Oh, I'm getting hit by another guy. There's an imp nearby casting fire at me, so let's heal. How's my health? Looks alright. Looks like I'm going to have both of them on me for a bit. Yeah. Missed the fire. Health-wise, I'm doing alright. Oh, no. Heal. Where is the guy? I can't see him. Sometimes these guys blend in a bit. Just see where the flames came from. There we go. Double click them. But before, you know, two shots would kill me. Receiving these fire bursts. Whoa. Shift one. Heal. Oh, he got me again. So no, he, this guy isn't dying. There isn't damage over time, apparently. There, but I was able to get him. Ah. <sighs> In case something else comes after me, I'm going to heal again. But I'm not seeing big mana drops. So might as well do it again. Ha! To be honest with you, what I'd probably try to do is play a character that is kind of like a combination between the Disciple, which I'm playing now, and the Apprentice. But I'm having more time to actually engage these guys in combat. I'm trying to find the remains of the, uh, what you would call it, the earth elemental. No, I probably won't because I don't know how far away I scrambled. Yeah, in this terrain, it's hard to see. So, no, who cares? <laughs> but in any case, you know, yeah, that was my main problem. And it, it basically was almost ruining the game for me. I was still interested because there's so much good about it. But I was like, man, this is just not right. <laughs> I was having a hard time targeting them. Now... It's not so bad because you could take a few hits. And this is just a simple armor. This is the basic, one of the first things you make. And I'm doing all right. I had to employ some tactics in that fight a bit because there's two of them at once. But I could literally go back. Um, I need to skill up to unlock the thread armor, I think, don't I? Let's go here to skills. Is the thread armor something you can craft right away? Let's look. Tailoring. Yeah, I'm able to craft some of them because I put some points in, but I would have to skill up in tailoring to be able to craft those. Might as well skill up in the smithing and craft those. The reason why you do the thread armor as a, an apprentice is because other armors give you penalties against the damage you can do. So you're supposed to wear thread armor, basically. But I wasn't even doing that, because I <laughs> had him in the wrong slot. <laughs> so, as you see, the game does... <laughs> it, it does work. It does function. Now, it is hard sometimes to pick up um, drops from corpses, but... I don't mind that so much now, as long as I can find them. And it looks like I'm able to find them. I wasn't used to it at first. But like that one, the Earth Elemental, can't find them. But the thing is, the, the monsters are smaller in size earlier on in the game as you are closer 
to the starting area. But I'm seeing now that yeah, why well, well, it's good. You do have to work at it, employ some tactics when fighting. You can do it. I mean, I was really struggling <laughs> before, but it was my fault, not the games. So yeah, there's still some bug fixes and the developer knows that and that's being worked upon. But I find the game enjoyable that I'm willing to be patient with that, you know? Now that I know how to put armor on, right? You know, and it probably even said in the uh, game tutorial when you make the simple armor. Go to the adventuring tab, drop it in the slots. But I put it in the wardrobe tab. <laughs> I guess that's where you can wear it like clothes underneath your armor. So you could pop some things in there so that you could put some enchants on those things and it's still technically being worn on your body so you get the enchants. But you don't have to sacrifice your armor. In other words, if you already have enchants on your armor, you could wear a wardrobe underneath the armor. Or maybe some of that is for warmth when you go into colder biomes, stuff like that. I don't know, but in any case, you know, in order for what you're wearing to be treated as armor, it has to be placed in the slots in the adventuring tab. I know I keep talking about that, but I just can't get over that. Just can't get over that. Nine episodes of pure struggle. Well, there seems to be a dearth of things to fight. Maybe I was going around too fast. Because, yeah, some of these uh, early stage uh, creatures are pretty sh small. But that's your visual sign when you're fighting something tougher, they're bigger. For that class of creature. Oh, shoot. I keep hitting that by accident. Healing myself unnecessarily. But if you want to do the healing without, what do you call it, without playing the disciple character, you can make healing potions. And that's what I was doing with my apprentice character at some point because I was taking a hell of a lot of damage. I'm like, man, I really need a healing potion. <laughs> of course, then I discovered the armor thing and. Life got a lot better. <laughs> Come on, give me something. Just one or two more fights and I'll call it a day. I just want to show you. It's like basically how... You know, here to start... Is that something? Is that a rhino? You know, the Disciple is a pretty good character. Of course, you could customize a character, and that's what I plan to do. When I play in Season 2. But, I, yeah, I'm basically going to start over again there in Season 2, because I'd like to have a good, solid season of, uh, of something more enjoyable than what most of the season was. But I'm going to do that tutorial series on a separate play playlist. Because I think there's a need for it out there. I learned a lot of things the hard way, but I did learn them. Uh, so I want to put that out there because there's really nothing on YouTube on this game currently. Okay, let's go across the water here. I did this last episode. You can get across. I'm trying to. Oh. I'm not able to get up. Oh, there. Yeah, jump a few bits. Jump. Here I'll have to swim a bit. 
It might as well just swim to the shore over there. Oh, I'm below water. Hit shift. Now my head's above water and I'm swimming. Okay. Yeah, space bar goes down in the water. So that's how you swim down. It's kind of like the opposite because space bar is jump when you're on land. <laughs> it's like really going the opposite direction. Shift is what you hit to uh, come up to the water. To surface. And then you can swim and not have to worry about losing air. Because your head's above water. Now this is... I guess it's still tier zero. But there should be slightly stronger creatures out here. Uh-oh, I'm getting attacked by something. Can I outswim it? Alright, shift one. There we go. She does a ha when she casts a healing spell. Um, do I want to be going this direction? Where am I? Right about there. Yeah, there's crocodiles here. I think I should turn... Yeah, if I keep going straight, I'll get to mainland. Yeah, the health's not going down so bad. These are baby crocodiles at this point. There might also be... I did, when doing the swimming episode, I saw... What I believe... Well, it looked like a shark. But they are fightable. It's not like real life. You're in the water with a shark in real life. You... <laughs> I mean, they usually don't attack humans, uh, they don't normally choose to, but they do, time to time, and they think you're something else, and it's really not a fair fight, so, in this game, it is, you can swim down there and, with your claymore, fight a shark, alright, let's see what that was, because it'll probably come out of the water, oh, we got two at once, How's the health? I had the wrong... There's two different creatures. And you can only target one at a time. This is where I'd like to throw a fireball at them. But I can't. But here, just standing and fighting. I took them both pretty much at the same time. Let's hit shift one. I'm all healed up and ready to go again. So, yeah, the main problem before was not wearing armor. So everything seems real easy now that I'm wearing even just the simplest armor. So, yeah, you can really go out and explore in this game. Since I'll be starting over, I really don't need resources. So yeah, I think I'll call it uh, an end here. Maybe one more fight. Because that was actually a good demonstration. Taking these two at the same time. An earth elemental and an imp at the same time. Now if I wasn't employing some of the tactics I had to develop when I was armorless. Still see it there. Uh, okay. Um, you know, then probably maybe some of these fights could go south, but I basically was doing some training with my arm tied behind my back, basically, and got much better at fighting. <laughs> so now that I'm wearing armor. All of those tactics really serve me well.
at this point, I still wouldn't do like the uh, goblin. They call those things the goblin encampments that they have in the game right now. I wouldn't do that without like a little bit better armor. Oh, there's a dark elf and some rare stuff or is it uncommon stuff yeah I really miss being able to cast spells all right but still oh I was fighting two there uh, I'm trying to get the dark elf a oh, dark elf and a crocodile nothing on him all right so as you see man I will after this cast the heal spell now the heal spell does increase as you have more skill points to it but here in this early on fighting it's been good I think what I would probably do is the apprentice slash disciple come in custom character put a couple points into two of the different attacks in the early apprentice spells and then put um, healing in the mix I wouldn't need the zealous strike necessarily I don't think And, you know, there's like the fire burst, ice missile, and um, lightning strike or something like that. The electroshock stuff. There for the apprentice, three different spells that get the six points. But I also think the stamina bonus of the Disciple is real nice. Yeah, but I would try to mix up those two things into one character. Because basically whatever stamina attributes this character has in that skill I showed at the beginning it's like two points higher than what it actually is. Hmm. We'll have to see. Of course, maybe when making a custom character, I could take care of that. Okay. But anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope this has been an informative episode for you. Certainly has been fun for me in learning about the Disciple and there's definitely some of the skills and attributes of the Disciple that I would put in a custom character, especially that healing spell. Don't have to make these potions. Um, although the potions aren't hard to make, you got to unlock it from the alchemy skill, which isn't bad. Just make some tannin to start. Um, and it's just like straw. No stock um oh i don't have them in the bin but basically stock mushrooms which you can grow you can plant and farm them in plots uh and uh cabbage which you can also grow um so when you find those things and you have a bit of a farm you can grow those elements to get healing and uh so that would be a way of doing it without doing the uh Disciple heal spell But the thing is about that is the heal spell is always on you Let's say you die Respawn and you have to go recover your corpse Well your corpse will have your potions so you won't have your heal spell until you get that corpse back And put those healing potions in the right slot For them to work with um, your hotbar 
So that was one thing I had to deal with. So that's why I do think that heal spell is definitely worth it. And then if you get things get really tough later on, you'll have that heal spell. And potions. Let's say your mana is running out, you really need to heal. You can use the potions instead. All sorts of things. But yeah, I have really been enjoying this game. And I'm going to stick with it. Because I think it deserves a bit more attention. And um, there's not a lot out there on YouTube anyway to help people with the new version the episodes are old and things are not that way anymore now did I put any other yeah because I like to keep the uh, uncommon iron here but anyway thank you for joining me please take care and do stay free it's been a pleasure having you please like and subscribe Share whatever you can do to help this YouTuber out. Take care now.